Before viewing video lessons, it is important to read the textbook using the learning guide as your turn-by-turn -turn directions. Then use the learning guide to take organized notes in your own words with examples and pictures. Chapter 1 Unifying Themes So far in the history of psychology, we've talked about the birth of psychology in 1879 and the development of these ten historical schools of psychology over the course of that history, with ending with positive psychology, which was first developed in the 1990s. So the question becomes, has psychology reached a point where there's a single unifying theory of psychology? Unfortunately, no. There is no single unifying theory yet. What we do have is something called the biopsychosocial model of human behavior. This model will come up again and again throughout the semester. This model basically says that your psychology, your behavior, can be explained as a result of the interaction between multiple factors. Biological factors interact with psychological factors and socio-environmental factors. Psychological can interact with biological and socio-environmental, and social-environmental can interact with biological and psychological. So essentially, our behavior is a result of all of these interactions. Within the biological factors, we specifically look at genetics, anatomy, and physiology. And we will look at these factors in Chapter 3 of this, of this class. Psychological factors include your behaviors, your thoughts, your memories, your emotions. We will explore these factors in numerous chapters. The social and environmental factors involve relationships, other social interactions, culture and society, and of course the overall material environment. We will also examine these in numerous chapters throughout the semester. While psychology doesn't have a single unifying theory, there are seven unifying themes. These are things that all modern psychologists generally agree to. First, psychology as a field of study is empirical. That means we use systematic observations to draw conclusions. In other words, psychology is a science. Psychology is also a field of study that is theoretically diverse. Those ten theories still exert influence today, some to greater degrees than others. In psychology, we view this theoretical diversity as one of our strengths. An analogy that I oftentimes use is the analogy of the blind man and the elephant. If you have an elephant in a room and have a series of blind men go into the room, ask them to each touch the object, and then come back out and tell you what the object is, each man will come out and tell you something different. One may say a snake, one may say a big leaf, one may say a wall, uh, one may say a broom, one may say a tree, all different kinds of answers. And the reason is that each of those theories is grabbing on to a different, each of those men is grabbing on to a different part of the ele elephant. In psychology, we see these ten different theoretical schools as grabbing on to a different piece of psychology. Psychology, as a field of study, also evolves in a socio historical context. This means that psychology is influenced by what goes on in the greater society and in history. 
A great example of this is the influence of World War II on the development of psychology. Psychologists today also agree that psychology is a field of study that studies behavior. When we look at behavior, we all agree that it's determined by multiple causes. So it could be unconscious factors, like Freud suggested, it could be environmental factors, like the behaviorist suggested, it could be uh, humanism factors related to our striving for personal growth. It could be a cognitive factor, a biological factor, cultural factors, all different kinds of factors can influence behavior. We all agree that our behavior is shaped by our cultural heritage. This basically means that we cannot look at someone's behavior in a vacuum. We all exist within our culture. We also agree that behavior is influenced jointly by heredity and environment. So if you want to know if we are born this way or if we're made this way, it's a little bit of both. The last unifying theme in the study of psychology that most psychologists agree to today, it's that people's experience of the world is highly subjective. This means that each one of us views our world in a slightly different way from a slightly different perspective. That makes studying psychology and studying behavior quite complex because each person experiences the world differently.